Okay, Chavra, you know it says, Tairus Hashem Tamima. Tairus Hashem Tamima, the Tairus perfect, Meshivas Nafesh, that it restores the soul. So if anyone's soul is feeling anxious, anyone's feeling nervous, anyone's feeling anxiety, and all the other emotions that are troubling people nowadays, it's all the more reason to just sit and learn some Tairus, to restore the soul to just calm a person down, to bring back that equilibrium and that clarity. So Baruch Hashem, that's what we're here to do. Moving forward in this series of Mashiach, resurrection of the dead, the world to come. So there's a blessing that Jacob gives his sons. The end of Bereshus, Sefer Bereshus, Mem Tes Yud, Jacob is blessing his sons and he says, Lo yasser shevet mi Yehuda, that the scepter shall not depart from Judah. A certain scepter, a certain a scepter is like a kingly symbol, shall never leave Judah, shall never leave Yehuda. This is talking about some of the hints of the world, of the times of Mashiach. So that scepter won't leave Yehuda, Raglov, and nor a scholar from among his descendants. There'll be the scholar from the descendants. At Kiyavai Shiloh. Until Shiloh comes, and Shiloh is a code word for Mashiach, Shiloh. And then what will happen? Veloi Yikas Amim, and then Shiloh, Mashiach will be the one Yikas. Yikal, excuse me, Yikas, he'll be the one to unify all of the people together. Mashiach will have this unifying quality and he will bring all of the people together. So we have to, we have to understand a little bit more. We already mentioned that there's going to be Mashiach, which is coming from King David. We mentioned that Mashiach is who he is, he's the seed coming out of Tamar and Yehuda into Peretz and then coming down into King David. We mentioned also that it comes from Lot and his daughter and Moab and the grandmother Ruth. But the Gemara explains something very interesting that there's really not one but there's two Mashiachs. Something that you guys have probably heard before, we're going to develop this over the next uh, 26 Shi'urim, which is that there's something called Mashiach ben David, the Mashiach, the son of David, and there's also someone called Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach, the son of Joseph. And like we just read here in the blessing of Yaakov to his children, which those were blessings that were prophetic blessings, that the Mashiach would be through Yehuda, and it will never leave the kingdom of Yehuda. It will be forever with King David, like it says in the prophet Samuel, Shmuel Beis, Zion to Zion, that the Mashiach will be the son of David, and everything that King David represents. Now, there's something else we have to look at for a moment. And that's like it says in Zechariah. It's described in Zechariah. How do you say Zechariah in English? Zechariah? Zechariah. Like it says in Zechariah. Described in Zechariah. Zechariah Yud Beis. Zechariah 12. So Zechariah the prophet, who's speaking here in prophecy, describes the end of days. And in the 12th chapter of Zechariah, you should learn it, he describes here that there's going to be a battle. It's important you should see the whole, you should see the whole end of Zechariah. I suggest you guys in the next... Uh, your homework for today, I don't like that word, but we'll use it anyways, is to look up Zachariah Yud Beis. 
the end of Zechariah, we're speaking about essentially the end of days, that there's going to be a battle over Jerusalem. And this is going to mark the end of the long story, and there's going to be a battle fighting over the holy city of Yerushalayim, Irakoidish, Baal Hashem. And the prophet describes there's going to be a fierce and very challenging battle before Mashiach. And at the gates of the city, it's going to claim the life of Mashiach ben Yosef. The Gemara in Sukkah explains, Nun Beis and Aleph, that inside the city is going to be the family of Mashiach ben David. Mashiach, the son of David, is going to be inside the city. Outside of the city, fighting off the enemies, is going to be Mashiach ben Yosef. There's going to be a fierce battle. Mashiach ben Yosef is going to die. We'll explain that in a moment. He's not going to make it. And Mashiach ben David, the family of Mashiach ben David inside the city, is going to eulogize Mashiach ben Yosef. So it's clear that we see from the Gemara that there is two Mashiachs. And these two Mashiachs, we're going to speak more about this as we get into the Parshias of Rachel and Leah, which we're moving into now, getting closer to Hanukkah, because Rachel, Rachel, is the mother of Yosef. And Leah is the mother of Yehuda and ultimately King David. And these represent two completely different worldviews. The universe called Leah and the universe called Rachel. We'll speak about that. But we see that there's these two Mashiachs. So what is it? Do we have one Mashiach? Is Mashiach the son of David? Is Mashiach the son of Yosef? How do we understand this? So the answer is the Mashiach that is going to guide us into the final redemption, who's going to build the third day Samikdash, being here of Yemen Amen, the one that is going to usher in the Messianic era, that's going to be with us. He's going to be that ultimate leader that's going to lead the world into global peace and happiness and prosperity, and he's going to be the one to teach the whole world Torah and unify all the nations of the world under one God, Hashem. So that Mashiach is going to be the Mashiach of David. That's going to be the Mashiach of David, maybe even King David himself, as we're going to learn. So what does it mean that there's a Mashiach ben Yosef? Who is this Mashiach ben Yosef character? Is it more than one person? What's going on here? So the Gemara says in Sanhedrin that there's a Mashiach in every generation. Every generation there could be Mashiach. Every guy's like, maybe it's me. Maybe. Could be. It's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Probably can't eat out of Burgers Bar anymore and do all that stuff. You get a lot, you know, too much work to do. To just like hang out and, you know, watch the game with the boys. So, it could be. It could be. Mashiach is in every generation, and if he becomes activated by the people, then he will be like a sleeper cell that becomes activated, and he's going to go into full motion to fulfill the full destiny that we're going to talk about what he has to actually do. And if we're worthy in that generation, then he'll come. And usually when people hear this, they're like, yeah, but, you know, Rabbi... The rabbis say every generation Mashiach is going to come. They're, they're, always, they're always talking like Mashiach is going to come. Do you guys say that all the time? You said that, you know, last year. And you said that when the last cataclysm happened. And you said that in the last election. You said that, you know, with the, the, the Goran Bush. And you said that. You're, you're always talking about Mashiach. It's, it's, you know, you in the Holocaust, Mashiach is going to come. And the, the, the Inquisition. You guys are always Mashiach. So the answer is he could have come. It was auspicious that he would come, but we're not getting the message. I really felt this year, Hebra, when it was Pesach. Pesach this year. Anyone noticed everything was locked up? The whole world, people didn't even know it was flying. Pesach time. And there was this almost eerie feeling like you just heard helicopters flying overhead. No one's going anywhere. There was a feeling like, now, 
If you just get it now, Mashiach would come now. There's a famous story of the Arizal. You know, don't tell this to your wife. They don't like this story too much, but it's Emes. Is that the Arizal, there was a moment they were learning Torah and Sfas, and they went into the deepest secrets of the Torah. And he told the Bnei Achabur, he said, if we go right now, to Yerushalayim, Yerakadosh, we can build the Beis HaMikdosh, Mashiach will come now. Everyone has to come with me right now. And one of the guys said, I just have to go tell my wife. <laughs> I just, you know, like, I'm about to, you know, march on Jerusalem. You know, I, I didn't even come back and like, you know, eat dinner she made for me. And, uh, you know, I'm just gonna book it. You know, they got a, a new baby at the house and, and, and I didn't even bring home, she needs diapers, I have to go pick them up. And I just wanna, None of that. I just want to tell her that I'm leaving. And you know what the Arizal said? Too late. Too late. It's yeah. done. It's done. Don't tell your wife's done. <laughs> There's such a thing. There's such a thing as now. But we don't get it. Now don't worry. You probably should tell your wife in this. In our generation, don't worry. Tell your wife if you, if you just want to like march on Jerusalem. Tell your wife. Tell <laughs> friends. Don't take the story out of context. But there's something about now. Something about if we would have gotten it now, it would have happened. In every generation, there's a now. And therefore, when the rabbis say the Mashiach can come now, they mean it. He can come now. It's so auspicious, but we're not hearing the call. And therefore, we're doing these sh- series of shiurim to begin to just hear the, 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 see the writing on the wall and hear the the calling of what we're really here to be doing, not get lost in the sauce of this world. Okay. So here comes the secret of Mashiach ben Yosef. Mashiach ben Yosef are the tzaddikim in every generation that are fighting evil. Mashiach ben Yosef is always categorized, as we know Yosef, anytime that you want to see and understand something, you have to look at the first time that we see it in the Torah and what it means in the Torah. What does Yosef represent in the Torah? Shomer Abris. Everything to do with protecting the bris. Everything to do with what's called Sadik, which is Yosoid, Oilam. Sadik means that he's careful with the bris, he's careful with all things that are of sexual nature. He doesn't mess around with that. He doesn't look at the eye candy. He stays solid. He's faithful to his wife. Everything that, that goes that goes into that. The tzaddikim in every generation that are called tzaddik are the ones that are fighting against immorality of the world. Mashiach ben Yosef means all this, the dream team of tzaddikim that are fighting fiercely against immorality in every generation. Because there's a war, like we just mentioned from the prophet, on Jerusalem. It doesn't have to mean physical. There's a, there's a war, a spiritual war. This place, Jerusalem, which is called the same letters as Yerushalayim, which means perfect awe, Yerushalayim. Perfect awe, Yerushalayim is the center of consciousness for the whole world. The whole world even knows that. It's like all eyes are always on Yerushalayim. All the newspapers, everything is about Yerushalayim. That's why this is the most heated place in the world. It's fire. All eyes are on Yerushalayim. There's a fight where the forces of evil are trying to penetrate Yerushalayim, which is also called the Yerushalayim inside of you. That perfect, undiluted, untainted place of godliness inside of you. And the tzaddikim are trying to protect its walls. That's called Mashiach ben Yosef. And every generation they're fighting off evil. And what it means that Mashiach ben Yosef dies, it means that if that generation of tzaddikim are not able to fend off the evil, it means that they die. And they, the next generation has to fight off the evil. And if they don't make it, they're dying all the time. Even though we have a tremendous amount of Mashiach ben Yosef that's continually fighting evil and pushing it back. That's the Mashiach ben Yosef. And if they're not successful, then they just return every generation and keep fighting. But the Mashiach ben David is the one who's inside the city. 
And he's the one that's going to finish the full job. That's Mashiach ben Dov. So Mashiach ben Yosef is the tzaddikim in every generation. What it means that he's going to die, or he does die, it means that he's fighting and he didn't, we didn't, we weren't able to fight off evil. And therefore, we're still not in the gener- we're still in the realm of a third temple yet. But in every generation, that power of Mashiach ben Yosef is active, and it's active in all of us. And we have to guard ourselves, and we have to go and be around people that are connected to that world of Mashiach ben Yosef. Those are the big tzaddikim. One of the things you'll notice about the big tzaddikim, when it comes to the Brit, very, very, that's like nothing to talk about. Just watch, you know, especially the Sardi tzaddikim, they talk about it openly, much more. They just, you know, don't mess with the Brit. Zeo, I spoke to somebody today, he said, I watched one Yossi Mizrahi video, it scared me to ever do anything against the Brit again. I was like scared, I said, are you Sephardi? He actually said no, which I said, oh my goodness, you must be, you know, really a strong, uh, strong soul nowadays to be able to stand up to that. He said, it just, it, it, because the people that are really the Mashiach ben Yosef, Yosef Mizrahi is such a Mashiach ben Yosef. Yossi, Yosef, you get it? He's fighting off the Ra in the world and telling you, don't mess around with this, don't mess around with this, yeah, this, this. And what is the world right now? Rabbi Isaiah, what's the world right now? It's chaos. It's chaos in immorality. Everywhere a person looks. It's crazy. It's crazy stuff, right? That's what characterizes this world. And the tzaddikim are fighting every generation. Doesn't mean you have to go around like this, walk the streets like that, <laughs> and bump into people and do stuff like that. But you have to, you have to be smart. You can't mess around. You can't mess around. And that's going to allow the fighting of Mashiach ben Yosef. He's paving the way. He's fighting off that Mashiach ben David can then come front and center. Now, I want to add a little twist to the story. So, so far, who's Mashiach? Mashiach ben David, Mashiach ben Yosef, and David and Melech. Okay? But I want to add one more twist. You know who else is described as Mashiach? Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu. We have to talk for a few minutes about Moshe Rabbeinu, about Moses. So the Pasuk says in Kehelis, Aleph, Pasuk Tes, Ma shahaya hu What was, will be. I think they say this in historical terms. If you, if you don't, if you don't listen to history, you're bound to repeat it. Because history repeats itself. What was, will be. Maisa Avasim Labanam. If you want to see where things are going, just look at the themes of history. So the sages teach us that in the same way that Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses was the redeemer of Klal Yisrael from Egypt. He was that messianic figure that came in, fought off the evil, and took the Jews out of Egypt amongst great miracles. And was, that was a messianic. It was the darkness of Egypt, which was called Erva Sa'aretz. Interesting. Egypt was called a land, the land of, you know what an erva is? It was called the land of immorality. It was the land that was characterized by immorality. Pharaoh, they were completely involved in idol worship and sexual relations and more immoral relations. That's why in the, in the firstborn, the killing of the firstborn, Hashem didn't just make the firstborn from the mother. What did he make? The firstborn also from the fathers. So all of a sudden, all the mothers in all the houses started seeing all these kids die. Wait a second. You, because the father had all these other children and they realized that he was sleeping around with all these other babies and it was all sorts of problems. It was, uh, it was a mess in Egypt. And Moshe Rabbeinu comes in and pulls the Jews out. So in the same way, Mashahaya, like it was, who that will be what it will be, and Moshe Rabbeinu will be the Messiah. And we even mentioned before, if Moshe would have come into Eretz Yisrael, 
w would he have come in? What did we say would have happened? He would have been the Mashiach. He would have built the third temple. He would build the temple, and anything that Moshe builds remains forever. What he puts his hand to is eternal, and that would have been it. He would have been the Messiah, and that would have ushered in the Messianic era. End of story. But he didn't come in. The Eschanan, 515 Tfilot, he had to stay out. So the Zohar says, Ma Shahaya. Ma Shahaya. Who? Shehiye. What was? Will be. So Ma, step to the man. Shahaya, Shin, Haya, Hey. That's Moshe. So just like what was will be, that's all Moshe. Moshe, you were the Redeemer then, you'll be the Redeemer again. It will be you. And remember we mentioned the blessing that Yaakov gave to the Shvatim, that he blessed Yehuda, that Judah will be the one that will have Shiloh. And Shiloh, we said, is the Mashiach, the Redeemer. So Shiloh, this is Shiloh, okay? What's the gematria of Shiloh? 300, 10, 35. What's that? 345. What's Moshe? 40, 300, 5, 345. Moshe is Shiloh. Moshe is the Mashiach. Moshe is that one. Moshe also has the leadership qualities of of the Mashiach. Because Hashem said, I'm willing to stop, I'm going to destroy the entire Jewish people. Right? After the golden calf. What did Moshe say? No mecheni, no mesifrucha. If you're going to destroy them, just erase me from your book, Hashem. Which means I'm not interested in having a new people started for me if, if my flock is not going to be there. Which we saw is also very reminiscent of the qualities of King David, that it was not about him. It was about the bigger picture. And these are qualities as we're going to be developing, really these shi'urim is about us tuning into the messianic ideal inside of us. Is to bring that messianic concept into the world, we have to tap into these qualities. So one of the big ones that we're mentioning now is Moshe said, it's not about me. It's about the bigger mission. It's about your vision, Hashem. So Hashem said, Moshe, we're gonna, it's going to be with you. He said, no, no, I'm one with the people. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm going down with my ship. If these people aren't part of it, it's not happening. So there has to be something inside of us now that has to be activated, which is that I can do things bigger than me. I can do something for Kalali, so I can do something global, something massive, much bigger than myself. This is Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu made himself available to every single you. He was the one who was sitting for 40 years just teaching Jews Torah. He didn't have any spare time to just go and play Fortnite or Call of Duty. He didn't have like, you know, free time to just go to the Alps and hang out, take some time off. Moshe Rabbeinu, the entire 40 years, is doing nothing but sitting. Rashi explains this in Bamidbar, Chavzayin, Tesayin, Yudches, Rashi there. Even Moshe, trying to bring close the heir of Rav. We're not going to talk now about the heir of Rav. The heir of Rav is going to be a, a longer discussion. The heir of Rav is called the mixed multitude, which were the Egyptians that wanted to convert, but they didn't convert L'Shem Shemayim. Which means they ended up getting, and Hashem said, Moshe, we're going to make a pain for you. Don't, uh... But Moshe said, I believe I could help them. I believe I can get through to them. I believe I can, doesn't that sound like what Avon Avinu was also doing? I can help Sadaim. I could get through to these people. Like Rav Shleimah that we were talking last week, these are my diamonds. I can get through to them, I can help them. You see nothing, I see diamonds. I see, even in the air of Rav. The air of Rav, which the Zohar calls the Negar Ra, the evil disease, the evil virus. There's a virus in the world, an evil virus, a sinister virus. And even there, Moshe Rabbeinu says that I can help them, I can bring them close, I can makar them. 
This is all what we are learning, Rabbi Nachman, Reish Pei Beis, and Nekudah Teva. Mashiach has this amazing connection. He's totally wrapped up with the idea of the Nekudah Teva, of Mamish seeing the best. So what have we basically come out with so far? Who is Mashiach? Well, we have four different archetypes. We have Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David, King David himself, and Moshe Rabbeinu. So who is it going to be? Is it going to be all four? Tomorrow we're going to explain a slightly Kabbalistic way to understand of how it's actually going to be everybody all at the same time. And the truth is we're mamish never going to know until Mashiach really comes. These are secrets. But we're starting to get some of the clues. And tomorrow we're also going to give 10 points of what we do know that Mashiach will embody, of who he is. And we're going to accept upon ourselves to try and emulate and embody those qualities. Amen. 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 Amen.